So these are goddamn concentration camps. No two ways about it. If anyone claims those are not concentration camps, ask them why. Maybe they would waffle and try to redefine what concentration camps are, so let's first define it. On One Long Night, a global history of concentration camps, Andrea Pitzer notes, Concentration camp exists wherever a government holds groups of civilians outside the normal legal process, sometimes to segregate people considered foreigners or outsiders, sometimes to punish. And so, we can define concentration camp as a place where a group or groups of people, usually minorities, are detained outside the normal legal process. That last part is really important. Pitzer makes a distinction between regular detainment, like the prison system, and concentration camps. The detainees of concentration camps are outside of the normal legal system, meaning most detainees sent to concentration camps did not have a fair trial and thus have had their human rights taken away. For example, the current American government does this by redefining what asylum seeker is to exclude people fleeing domestic and gang violence. By doing that, the administration essentially turned what should be legal asylum seeker into illegal aliens who are not protected by Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Though, not that the administration would abide by that either. This is the sort of legalese bullshit magic that allows the US government to detain people without due process. And if you want to know how atrocities start, well this is it. By denying the human rights of innocent people. However, there's one thing that separates this current concentration camp system and most other concentration camps of the past. Most concentration camps of the past were established during or after a conflict. The need to separate the perceived enemies from the general populace was usually the justification for building the camps themselves. But not this time though. There was no war between Central America and the US. There were no attacks against America by asylum seekers. There wasn't a conflict anywhere inside the US. And instead, because there's no real threat from asylum seekers, the Trump administration have had to gin up support against immigrants by dehumanizing them, portraying them as a horde of unclean and dangerous people invading America. I mean, you've seen Trump dehumanize people, right? And then you have Mark Morgan, who will lead the US Customs and Border Protection, saying that asylum seeker children will become MS-13 gang members without any proof. He said that about children for God's sakes. I hope I don't have to tell you how fucked and wrong this is, right? And this willingness to dehumanize marginalized groups has made it easier for the Trump administration and other right-wing politicians to treat asylum seekers and immigrants however they see fit because in their eyes, asylum seekers and immigrants of colors are less than human or less human than whites. And anything less than human can be treated without respect or dignity. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen the news, right? I mean, you have shit like family separation, which, side note, the administration is doing intentionally as a deterrent, denying children's basic needs, just straight up neglecting them, putting people into minuscule jail cells so crammed that they can't sit down for weeks, solitary confinement, letting children die, putting families in cages, starving them, and many, many more inhuman atrocities like these. Human beings would not do that to other people, especially to children, willingly, without seeing the other side as less than human. I'm going to talk about dehumanization on my next video and I'll get way deeper into it there. So again, if anyone claims those are not concentration camps, Ask them why. Is it because they don't want the US to be compared to Nazi Germany? Well, concentration camps started long before the Nazis. And sure, the current immigration concentration camps are not as bad as Auschwitz, Birkenau, or Dachau. But those weren't the first concentration camps built by the Nazis. Dachau was the first permanent concentration camp. But before that, the Nazis built a temporary concentration camp near the village of Nora for German communists, social democrats, and other political opponents. They justified it by saying it was done to protect the detainees from the general populace, but, I mean, it was the Nazis. The concentration camp in Nora was much, much less violent than the later ones. I mean, it was still bad. I would even argue the conditions were similar to that of the current American concentration camps. But the later camps were way, way worse. The detainees in Nora were locked in dormitories for 24 hours a day, only going out when they're being interrogated. Quoting straight from Encyclopedia of Camps and Ghettos, 1933 to 1945, the hygienic conditions were catastrophic, as there were too few toilets and washing facilities. At times, the camp was completely overcrowded. However, it was not a work camp, so they weren't worked to death, they were also allowed to vote, and eventually, the detainees were released if they signed agreements to forego communist activities. So, why am I telling you all of this? Well, I want to point out that the Nazis didn't start with extermination camps. They built up their capacity for atrocity slowly, month by month, year by year. They had to build their infrastructures capable of mass incarceration and extermination over a period of a decade. And currently, America is building infrastructures for a similar purpose, getting rid of millions of people falsely deemed dangerous or undesirable by way of incarceration and deportation. 
Now, am I saying America will end up exterminating millions of people? No, but people will die. And in fact, as of June 13th, at least 24 people already died. And it will be nigh impossible to detain and deport millions of people, which is what Trump is trying to do with 2 million undocumented immigrants without accidentally killing hundreds or even thousands of people. See, it's not that the American government will intentionally exterminate people, but the material conditions in concentration camps always deteriorate. To quote a tweet from Andrea Pitzer, the longer a camp system stays open, the more predictable things will go wrong. Contagious diseases, malnutrition, mental health issues. In addition, every significant camp system has also introduced new horrors of its own that were unforeseen when that system was opened. So can we all agree that those are fucking concentration camps? They are not extermination camps, obviously, but I think they will eventually turn into war camps. Now, this is just me speculating, but we've seen this in the past in America before. The American private prison system already have the infrastructure required to turn those concentration camps into work camps. After all, the American prison system already utilizes their prisoners for cheap labor. It would make sense then for these private companies to extend this to the concentration camp detainees. I mean, think about it. If Trump actually rounds up undocumented immigrants already in the United States, there will be less people filling in for low-paying jobs. Private prison system contracted by ICE can then turn around and sell the labor of the detainees for really, really cheap. And knowing America, if it's profitable, they'll do it as long as it flies under the radar. I mean, it's already sort of happening right now, though at much smaller scale. And so, if they have millions of non-violent detainees, why wouldn't they just turn the detainment facilities into work camps? Now, will there really be work camps in America? Well, I can't know for sure, but it sort of makes sense, right? In a twisted, capitalist logic kind of way. Nevertheless, even if that doesn't happen, people will still die and children will still be hurt and traumatized. The longer this travesty stays open, the worse it will get. To quote Andrea Pitzer again, the longer they're there, the worse conditions get. That's just a universal of camps. They're overcrowded. We already know from reports that they don't have enough beds for the numbers that they have. As you see mental health crisis and contagious diseases begin to set in, they'll work to manage the worst of it. But then there'll be the ability to tag these people as diseased, even if we created those conditions. Then we, by creating the camps, try to turn that population into the false image that we used to put them in the camps to start with. Over time, the camps will turn those people into what Trump was already saying they are. This system has to be stopped way before it turns into an even bigger atrocity. What's worse, if you look at the history of concentration camps, the longer American people allow these camps to stay open, the harder it will be to dismantle them in the future. To quote Andrea Pitzer yet again, big camp systems don't close themselves. Legislatures have never closed them against the will of an executive. The Supreme Court seems inclined to give the executive power it's historically had access to, even if that power might appear to be abused in current circumstances. So what can you do to help? Well, the least you can do is to vote the motherfuckers who support these policies out of office. But there are other ways to help. If you got some extra cash, donate to immigrant advocacy groups and charities. I suggest Racist, though they're mainly operate in Texas. There should be a link to their donation page in the description. If you're a landlord, stop sucking wealth from the working class and start doing something good for humanity by sheltering asylum seekers. Also do the same if you have an extra room to spare. Info in the description. Another thing you can do is to report ICE raids to national immigration hotlines, and the list of phone numbers are in the PDF in the description. Actually, if you know any undocumented immigrants, give them the phone numbers in the PDF because they also help immigrants look for lawyers, caseworkers, and stuff like that. If you're an immigrant yourself, join your local immigrant rapid response network. They deal with ICE raids by providing access to lawyers and other legal help. Google your location plus immigrant rapid response network to find one near your area. If there's none, start a new one. Also, check out this website on what to do if there's an ICE workplace raid. I mean, these things obviously won't completely fix the problem, but I really, really hope I don't have to tell you that alleviating this horror inflicted upon immigrant families and children is good and necessary. And you know what? If you think these are some liberal ass solutions, well, you are absolutely correct. It doesn't really fix the underlying issue of white supremacy and imperialism inherent within capitalism, but I mean, goddammit, children are fucking dying. Would you really want to be complicit when there's a fascist government running up people? That has never end well, ever. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, this video is really short because the video that was supposed to come out this month requires a lot more research than I thought. So I just, you know, made this video in a week and just, you know, put it out there, I guess. Um, second thing, 
If you're wondering why I'm making this video, well, it's a little bit personal for me because I have friends and families in the United States that are, you know, undocumented. Some of them are legal, but some of them are undocumented, so it's kind of personal for me. But yeah, the next video is going to be on dehumanization, so stick around. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.